All right, so this video is going to show you a little bit more about blending with white as well as adding the extra media of watercolor to um, this mix, mixed media or future mixed media assignment. So the way that you would blend, uh, make sure you, um, you kind of look at the, the tip of your white and if you need to clean it, you, you can. So I start with the light area so you have a kind of a little halo around this now um some of this if you wanted it to remain um kind of like scratchy or whatever i think that that's okay because what um what i'm going to do is i'm going to fill in some of this stuff with watercolor but i did want you to kind of see the value of um of actually blending a little bit with white um, Prisma, it actually sells a blending tool. It's a, um, it's a, a actual pencil and it's just made of wax. So you can actually buy that. I don't have that with me to show you guys and I don't think that actually came in your pack. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to use what you guys have. So, so anyway, so this is, this is kind of the gist of the blending and I could go heavier or whatever. Um, the more intense that you make with the white, you know, you've got kind of a, you can make this area kind of um, heavier and brighter and it can kind of like radiate out, but it does have the look of oil paint, the way that this is done. So it just depends on what you want to do, but there is a limit as to how much you can layer on top of this before things get a little muddy. So what I'm going to do, y'all, is I'm actually going to add just a little bit of pigment to my background just to show you guys that it is possible. Um, you can actually add some watercolor on top of um, your, your pencil if you want. I'm just kind of... It just sort of, um, in some ways, fills in some things. So this is just basically just kind of a wash of of your of the color here of the blue. Um, it's there's hardly anything on my paintbrush. You know, the most was like right here on the heavier part, and I just kind of blended that out. Now, when it dries, it's going to be just fine um, as it as it goes. So anyway, just to let you guys know um and i could add like something else there if i wanted to um like for instance if i wanted to warm that little section up i could add like a little bit of yellow ochre um and i was gonna have like that kind of tone sort of radiates off of that sphere right there that's the way that I see it it's kind of a reflection right there so anyway that could happen right there um, you can like here if you're wanting to blend in some things you can actually do that um, what I'm gonna do is just be kind of conservative and I'm, I'm just sort of adding like a yellow ochre right here but you could add you know red or whatever it is that you want to to add to this and it it just kind of fills things in i'll add a little bit of red for you guys because you you really probably can't tell that much of a difference when i added that yellow ochre it probably just looked like i was um moving things around <laughs> and, and not really doing anything hopefully you can kind of see there's a little bit of a fill in right there a little bit more of a brightness um when i actually add that i could add you know yellow I'm not going to do too much because you're, you're sort of getting to that area where you need to leave that light right there. But, um, yeah, I can put it right there. And then I could always come back. And if I needed to blend after this dries, I mean, you could add um, color pencil actually on top of that. And it would actually work really well. So I'm going to, um, in my background, um, I'm adding just some green right here. It's a little bit brighter than what I wanted it to be, but that's okay. I'll just make it go more towards the foreground and that'll kind of divide things out a little bit further. So I'll do that and then I'll add um, like a more of a blue green back here in my background. 
also if you've got this going on back here what I would do and what I would do with that blue is I would kind of touch on um, the both areas like if you got green here I'd kind of bleed that up just a little bit and then um, you may have to wait until things dry a little bit to do what I'm saying to do because uh, these two will run into each other if they're like wet on wet kind of thing so alrighty and and so to my shadow what I could do is I could do like um, a little reflection of my actual color so you're gonna have a little bit of a reflection of the color of this into your shadow and I'm pulling um, after I did some kind of orangey whatever's into that and fade it out so every time I use a color I um of course I'm, I'm wetting my paintbrush but I'm kind of dabbing it off on a paper towel on the side you guys can't see that and uh, probably if I would have thought about it I would have zoomed out just a little bit so you guys could see this but it's okay Hopefully you get the gist of, of what's going on. So. so anyway, as you can see, you know, um, the color pencil is a great little foundation. If you're wanting to do a little bit in watercolor, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it, it definitely can make for a successful mixed media piece. So it is it's up to you, but I, I really, I highly enjoy this uh, little step, but I, I like watercolor. I mean, that's kind of my thing. And I also um, like to work in colored pencils. So it's a good little combo for me at least. So anyway, um, yeah. So I hope that you found this uh, at least entertaining. <laughs> Maybe you'll learn something, but anyway, try it out, play around with it and see what you can come up with. All right. Thank you.